Okay. So I just wanted to share a little bit about... Um, uh, I was working in the uh, stock market at the age of 30, and I had no spirituality uh, at all. And I, I, was, I was in three addictions, uh, primarily food, work, uh, stuff. Uh, and um, suddenly out of the no, nowhere, I was overweight, chubby, obese, in the stock market, as was binging, and uh, extreme work and pressure. And then suddenly, on a flight back, my, my feet were swollen, and I had to take my shoes off. My mother was terrified. And I was immediately, I had a blood test and immediately uh, admitted to the Royal Free Hospital with, with uh, diagnosed with kidney failure. <clears throat> and um, and the, it basically I'd lost 70% of my kidney function in 24 hours. So what that means is I was going hurtling towards death very rapidly at the age of 30. And I wasn't spiritual at all. Uh, <coughs> and... Uh, and... Uh, and the doctors were taking like 10 tubes of blood out of me at a time to try and figure out what it was wrong, what was going wrong and how to save my life. And I realized I was about, you know, I was facing death at the age of 30. And, um, and what happened there was suddenly I'd run out of options and I realized something in me wanted to live. I didn't want to die at the age of 30 and somehow I surrendered. I surrendered and I had a heavenly time with spiritual experience. And, um, and there was a message, find a spiritual solution. And after that, you know, it was very profound because I knew I needed to seek spirituality to find the answers. You know, it was like, even though in the catastrophe came, there was an opportunity, in the, in the midst of facing death and the life that I had built up to try to get a career in the stock market and build up my career, you know, it was all being taken away. And I was in absolute, the way I was, uh, after I got the kidney failure, was um, basically very, very soon after I had no health left. I was, I was more or less unable to return to my career. So I'd lost my career. My mother, seeing me almost dead, had a heart attack and was admitted to intensive care for three months and eventually had to have triple heart bypass. So my mother was nearly dead. I was nearly dead. And... Uh, and uh, and then what's the meaning of that? Because, you know, one day before I was fine. And then within the next day, it was like my whole life had been stripped away from me. Health, career, and mother. So that's, that's, that's very, very common in spiritual circles, to have what I call a rock bottom. You know, where everything, all the things that I had invested, I had invested myself into. My health, my mother, my career, all of them had failed. I tried to I tried to get the meaning of my life in all of these external things, and they'd all let me down. And but in letting them down, in all these things that I tried to find salvation in, I had a spiritual experience. Now, having said that, I wasn't enlightened. You know, far from it. You know, I was still very messed up. And uh, when the first, you know, uh, one of the, the the great thing with kidney failure, if you're a food addict, is you, you, it's very difficult to be a food addict if you get kidney failure, because you, you eat food and you, you become nauseous and you have to throw it up. So uh, that's, uh, that's annoying, but uh, uh, because you want, you want some anaesthetic if you're nearly dead and you've lost your life. But uh, I, did, I did do something, so there was a lot of, there, there should have been a lot of anger for me, but I had to find a way to numb it out. So I remember this, and this, I think this is hilarious. I bought an, a, a cinema pass, all day cinema, you know, monthly cinema pass. And I was just in the cinema watching film after film, trying to take my mind off that everything's gone. So I was just numbed out, but eventually it was years of processing. Years of processing, no job, no career, lost my health. My whole identity was in my career. I couldn't function as a man, you know, eventually I was in a machine. Uh, you know, my mother eventually recovered, but her health was gone. So, but the, the great thing is, in, in processing it, that I found, I found the meaning of that was to find what's the meaning of life. You know, is the meaning of life in externals, or is it in finding a sort, you know, what, you know what's the purpose of this life? And that, that's why I do this group now, here today. Because I think in Rock Bottoms is a spiritual opportunity, like, 
The ego's calamity is the spirit's opportunity uh, to find, uh, you know, to project externally that salvation, using the Course of Miracles, salvation is not found in my body. You know, one of the lessons in the Course of Miracles is I'm not a body. I'm free, for I'm as God created me. And uh, the Course of Miracles also says it, it cannot be anything outside of myself. If I seek for salvation in anything outside of myself, I'll be looking in the wrong place. So, not my body, not my mother, not my career, you know, not a relationship. I've got to find the source, the meaning of life. But where do I find the meaning of life? And that's, that, for me, is the great thing. And that embarked me on uh, a journey of spiritual, spiritual discovery and awakening. And that's why I'm here. It's like letting go of everything within my ego to find the source, the source and the meaning of life. So the Course of Miracles would say, like, uh, you know, the Course of Miracles, I think, was in alignment with, with, with what Buddha said. You know, Buddha said, um, to realize enlightenment, you've got to let go of all your attachments. You know, to, and to, to let go of the old age, suffering and death, you've got to let go of every single attachment, and then you'll be free from the suffering of, the endless suffering in this world, where you seek salvation. Does my body look good? Does that girl like me? Does that... Uh, is this career the source of my worth? Or if people like me, is that the source of my worth? So you, you go endlessly in the merry-go-round until you achieve enlightenment. Or as the Course says, although the Course would call them the false gods. You've got to let go of the false gods to find the true God. Or the Course would say, we're removing the blocks to love. So in, in letting go of all the, all the projected symbolic external gods, that have made, then you find the true God within, you see. So, just wanted to do that, you know, because um, I've seen it so many times, I go to 12-step groups, where people will suddenly have everything stripped away from them. You know, they'll have no career, lose all their friends, lose absolutely everything, and then they become humble and willing to seek a spiritual solution, because they haven't got anything left. And that, that's, uh, that for me is, uh, Hawkins actually says something about it, see, like, um, and he talked about cancer, actually, he talked about cancer, it's like, if you get something like a life-threatening diagnosis, there's nothing like that to kick your ass into doing spiritual work, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, you've got, uh, you know, you, 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 you've got, you've got a spot on your nose, you know, are you going to do, and, and it's not really a serious thing, are you going to do a lot of spiritual work? <laughs> probably not, probably not, you know, it's like, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to carry on with my drugs and my alcohol and my donuts, and I'm going to be like Mary, you know, forget spiritual work. You know, you're going to be dead, you're going to be dead next week, okay, let's, get, let's find God, you know. <laughs> you know, it gives you, it gives you the spiritual momentum to let go of your whole life and look for what's the meaning of life. Otherwise we get embroiled in the meaningless stuff, you see. So 